What is up everyone? So today we're continuing back on the K-Series swapped S15 and what I want to do today is internally get the engine ready because I just want to take apart this thing once. Even though it's going to be in and out of the car a million times and it probably won't be a while till we run it, I just want to get the internals over with so we never have to crack it open again. Today we have this massive pile of parts that we're going to be throwing on our K24A2 and if you guys are Honda guys, you already know what we're about to do. So I feel like a big misconception with the K24 is everyone's like, man, you should put a K20 head on it so you can rabbit hire it. Now I feel like that kind of confuses people because it's not in the head that allows these things to actually rev this high. This thing could rev that high, but the oil pump will grenade itself because it has these crazy big bulky balance shafts in them. So if you want to rev this thing like a K20, all we got to do is retrofit our K20 oil pump and we could rev this bitch to the moon. Right RJ? Put it to 10k all day, baby. I don't know about 10k, but we can get it up there. All right, so we have all our brand new components from Honda. We got the pump, the winnish tray, the tensioner, guides, bolts, hardware, everything. Everything to go, and we're gonna be modifying all this to fit inside our engine. All fresh, brand new stuff. Never gotta worry about it. So, first step to all this, of course, dropping the pan and ripping off all of our existing timing components. That thing is unreal. This thing needs to go on Jenny Craig. You can see these two giant balance shafts on here. I don't know why they do it, but obviously, look how much more rotating mass it is than this. We got the tensioner first. Just like, just like that, we could just pop the chain off. So nice is the simplicity of that, right? Nothing's worse than like an overcomplicated timing chain setup where this was just like, that's it. That's it. Tensioner, take it off. So now we have our oil pump chain, and so this time it has a tensioner right here and a guide right here, and we'll be replacing this guide because the K21 is actually shorter. Get up. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh my God. This thing's really heavy. It looks like a Mini Cooper <laughs> supercharger, oh, yeah, doesn't it? it? Does. Oh my God. That's crazy. So you rev these things too far and that just says bye. This is gonna go straight into the dumpster. Where Actually, belongs. a scrap guy would love this. This is a big piece of metal. That's, that's some coin right there. Take off these little window trays right here because we don't need it. All right, so the first thing we gotta do is this little oil passage right here. We don't need it, we gotta cap it. Because if you don't, you got low oil pressure and well, not gonna have a good time. So, I was told this should just pop out. Let's, you know, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Get out of there. Come on. There it is. Oh, Let's go. Check this thing out. Oh my It's God. basically just like a restrictor pill. Yeah. So, that sucked. Yeah, I would not recommend. So, uh, I guess, so the process of doing this now is, if you look, it's threaded. And well, we can take a 12 millimeter bolt, shove it in there and never think about it again. Coat it in some Honda Bond. Exactly. That's what the, that's what the pros do. It'll never move. Everyone seems to just put a little dab of Honda Bond on it and they have great luck with it, so. Take that. Just, just a little snug. Okay, that, that's, that's tight. That's tight. Just like that. Oil passage filled. All right, time for the sketchy part. We have our oil pump, and as you can see, it won't fit. So we got to uh, make it fit. And what we have to do essentially is cut out this whole like lower section of aluminum. As you can tell, it's not really structural, so it's not really much of a big deal. So uh, let's mark this up, get the end grinder out, and well, make it fit. Look at that, we just clear. So we probably have, what, 20 thou around the whole thing, which oh, yeah. is awesome. So you have to cut out a little bit more than you might think, but the main goal is to make sure that you don't go too crazy right here because you do need this red hole, but you definitely have to cut a lot off that. So yeah. if you're just a K-Series guy, front wheel drive, you're good, bolt this on, ready to go. But since we are using the Toge factory kit to convert this real wheel drive, we actually have to change up our pickup point. Oh. Yeah, won't fit with the real wheel drive pan. Check it out, look how simple this is. That's all, that's it. This little gear right here, 
is what pushes all of the oil through your engine. Oh my God. Yeah, so think about spinning this much mass versus that giant twin scroll balance shaft bullshit over there. So this is super easy, not even a gasket, you just... Made it too. Oh, Damn. Beautiful Ooh. fit. Ooh, that looks good. Yeah, too. this is a really nice looking piece. Yeah, that's about right. Good to go. So we still have the attached pickup too, but we could do that after. Um, so here's our brand new uh, Type S oil chain right here. Yep. Ooh. Let's snake this thing on first. So get that on, then we could just bang, bang, that's it. And then don't forget this little sneaky treadmill in the back. Oh, I didn't know that existed. Yeah, that'll get you. And then we cut to the scene where I use a torque wrench. Yeah. So then we take our new guide, if you want the part number. There we go. And then we're gonna be reusing our old guide. I guess I forgot one piece, right? Whatever, this, nah. thing, this thing doesn't really go bad, so. Oil pump is up there and all tension on, so now we can put on our windage tray, which goes. Uh, done. That's it. All right. For the Toge Factory rear wheel drive setup, uh, we actually have to trim the windage tray to fit with the oil pan, so. So what we're gonna have to do is actually cut off the tail end right here. I'm assuming this lip probably touches the oil pan because it's such a slim oil pan, so. Right. We go to our Toge Factory instructions. Yeah, cut the ass off of it. Get it out of there. Sometimes, right? Are you using them? Yes, I am, RJ. <laughs> wow. So here's our new pickup tube. To work with the front sump pan, we just gotta Stick it right there, there's an O-ring in there already, so we just gotta tighten it down. Easy peasy. Yeah. All right guys, so before we throw our timing components back on, we're gonna replace one more thing, and that is our intake variable cam gear right here. And well, it being a K24, it has the RBB gear, which only allows it to vary about 25 degrees. So the go-to mod for you know these setups, especially on NA setup, is the RBC intake gear. Because this actually allows it to vary about about 45 degrees, which is huge. So, but it definitely helps a little bit with the power band, and uh, it's definitely worth the couple hundred bucks that this thing is. Nice. Yeah, it's fancy, isn't it? Right off. In with the new. Ooh. Ooh. Then we're gonna torque this about 80 foot pounds, and then that's it. So this is a huge upgrade for the NA guys, and well, for the turbo, any NA mod's a good turbo mod, right? So we got brand new guides, which is super nice. All right, timing's super easy. There's a dot here, a dot there. We put both dots between these two gold chains right here. And then on the bottom, there is a dot on one of the teeth. You probably can't see it because it's super hard to see. It's like right there. And we put the gold link right on the dot. Dot between the gold link and both of them. And then, so then the something down here yeah, that yeah, you yeah. can barely see. <laughs> we have our upgraded tensioner. Woo! You don't want these falling off. It's <laughs> the last thing you want falling off. The new stuff is really tight compared to like what we took off. It's crazy how much the old chain must have stretched. Yeah, I mean, you know, probably, yeah. probably the stock chain. All right, through the upper guide back in really quick and then it is officially done. So if I did this correctly, I won't whack a valve right now. I think we're good, I think we're good. There we go. All right, spin it hard enough so it hits VTEC. Yeah, right. All right, so we got this thing finished up and now it's time to seal it up. So we have the timing cover and the oil pan and well, for the timing cover, if you guys remember, it was disgusting. It was hideous, it was borderline just ruined until I went up to uh, Stago Performance yesterday and with a little bit of elbow grease and their vapor home machine, we got it looking beautiful. Check out this before and after.
So now to put this on, we have this one O-ring that I just replaced and the rest of it is just RTV literally everywhere. But since this is a Honda, we gotta use Honda Bond. All right, so I put 30 gallons of Honda Bond on this thing because I have this raging anxiety that things are gonna leak. It's not a BMW oil pan. Yeah, you're right. Or front cover, you'll be good. It's not even like doweled or anything to help you like get it in place. Doesn't need them. Uh, just, you just feel bad when you put it off centered and you get your RTV all smeared around. Oh, look at that, dude, it's beautiful. Wow. All right, so uh, Downstar actually sent me a really, really nice uh, dress up kit for the engine, but obviously it's not in yet. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just replace the bolts like kind of one by one when we're, you know, when it's together, but. Looks better than it did before, that's for sure. That's not saying much. I like how it kind of like, it's not like too clean. It kind of has like that new OEM look to it, you know, instead of it being like a billet look. Yeah, 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 let's see. Let's see. Cover is on and I got this lanky kid in here. What's up, buddy? It's so tiny, I love it. Long time no see. Look how short it is. Is this the first time you've ever seen a K-Series open? Yeah, it's so tall, it's so interesting. Uh, this is the four exhausts that you got coming up. Oh, right, that's it. The funny thing is you're probably gonna do one of these in like a month knowing you. You know, I, it makes so much sense. I just like, I feel like I need to like experience one before I'm like gung-ho about it. Okay, okay, so, you could drive this yeah, next time. You'll love it. With this. You'll love it. How much power she can make? Well, how much you want to make? 650 and 480 foot-pounds torque. Okay, that, that's, that's a little much. Why? I don't know. I'm gonna say, I mean, it is a stock bottom end, you know what I mean? In stock head studs and stock head gasket. So I'm gonna give you 500 and you're gonna like it. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> oh man, it's a party. Ugh, whatever, dude. Get out of here. Get out of here. Tommy, Tommy said we have to go back. He's mad looking at me. <laughs> Come on. All right, bye. Have All fun right. with your pyramid scheme. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, engine's getting there. Now we have to throw the oil pan on, and that will make it. I'm saying that will make it a real drive engine once that pan is on. <laughs> that, that's what counts? That's what counts. <laughs> then it will be real wheel drive. All right. All right, let's get to it. Whatever floats your boat, kid. All right, boys, so it is oil pan time. Now it is a tight fit. This is a very tight clearance thing. We had to shave a couple things, a couple little test fits, but everything is good now. So we got both surfaces clean, of course. So now we're gonna Honda bond this thing together. And once this thing is attached, it's a real wheel drive engine. It's not a front wheel drive engine anymore, right, Samantha? It's true, this way. Yeah, that's it, so. <laughs> Honestly, Honda Bond is my first time using it. It's some thick stuff. Oh, yeah. I'm no, Honda Bond is the truth. How are you feeling about that, Jim? Um, I put enough Honda Bond on here to save the Titanic. Really? You know, there was more. There was enough room on that door. That's, that's all I want to say. On what? Wait, what? DiCaprio yeah. put the girl on the door. Yeah, there was enough room. In the door? On that door Leonardo was... could have lived, but Ruth was a... Me oh, the you. door that was floating in the ocean. There was enough room for two people Realistically, on I don't know how she's alive. I was going to say the same thing. How did you survive on the door anyways? They both should have died. <laughs> it would have been more dramatic. Had a better ending. We Flex should film an alternate ending Titanic scene. But with Flex Seal. Jimmy, you got like three cameras, right? Yeah, let's make it happen. <laughs> with the amount of seal on this thing, if it leaks, I'm going to be mind blown. I think these are the right bolts. Nope, not the right bolts. Seeing it on the engine now looks ridiculous because there's no room to put it in the rear, so the whole pan has to be a front sump. <laughs> it looks <laughs> insane. But uh, bought a new crank pulley because they're so freaking cheap for some reason. Like new, new? Yeah, dude, it was like... Like factory? Yeah, it's like $45. They're so cheap for some reason. I didn't know you could reason. do that. Yeah. Dude, this is a huge honker. Dude, it's insane. It looks crazy. It's a spec. We'll just slip this on there for now. And there we go. Hands on, it might still look like a front-wheel drive engine, but... At least now in my heart, I know it's a real drive engine. So the big thing uh, is going to be the manifolds. Once the manifolds are on, then it's going to start to look uh, real, uh, real drive. The intake manifold, especially uh, in exhaust manifolds, being made currently, which is super exciting. The intake manifold, I still haven't decided which one I want to do. Um, 
The Skunk one's nice and affordable, but I don't really like the way it fits. Same with the Kimiata one, so uh, we might get a custom one made or we might wait because I think Tokyo Factory might be making one on the low. I don't know if I'm supposed to share that, but oh. whatever. So, um, cool. So, last thing is we need to do the water pump housing, and unfortunately, none of that stuff showed up. So I can't put that on just yet, but we'll get that on. All the accessories will be on there. But at this point, since the motor is internally all good to go, um, we can throw the trans on tomorrow and the engine mounts, and we can actually test it for the first time, which is super Ooh. exciting. So that's the goal. That's not a good goal, B. Damn, you're trying to sit this thing in the car? I, I really want to see it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So it's going to be in and out of the car probably 40 freaking times, just like Masanda. Well, maybe not. But a lot, all right. But so uh, we might as well do the first test fit very soon. So um, ooh, that's exciting. I know. I want I to see. Just, I just want to see it in there. So. I can't wait to see the manifolds because that's what's really. That's good. what I'm saying. That's what's going to slow. I mean, together. right now it's still like it looks front. The problem is yeah. we know too many people case here. That's what like, yeah. I'm too used to seeing this. I mean, I've never seen this. This honker. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Once we see that throttle body right yeah. around yeah, right here, yeah. here and the curve right here, we're showing. So um, I'm happy. We're good to go. Ready to party. And well, like, I don't know. You guys know the deal. We just did a merch drop like three days ago. So there's a little bit of stuff left. If you guys want to catch it, hop below, shop to me out. And besides that, you guys know the deal. Like, comment, subscribe. Stay tuned for more content. And Brian, have a great night. Peace.